everyone, welcome to the Spellbound Miniatures YouTube channel and this video is a catch up video for the Book Nook series. I did create a tapestry from print and cut file with the Cricut and it didn't come out exactly how I wanted to so we're going to revisit that today and I'm going to show you an alternative method that I'm using and you can use that too if you like those results. So the first product that I used originally was this sort of photo fabric it's a sheet of A4 and it has sort of fabric on one side and then a little bit more sort of stiffer paper behind you print on it with the inkjet printer and then you can peel the fabric off of the backing paper and it produced this and when it originally came out of the printer it was much more vivid but the instructions tell you to rinse this underwater and as you can imagine it rinsed all of or a lot of the ink out and made it a lot more faded now a faded tapestry would be quite good because it's a, a book nook in a medieval castle setting but it was also the quality that i didn't really like so I thought I'm going to try some other methods that I'd seen. One of them particularly is to use freezer paper and that's not something we typically use in England. So I had to get it off Amazon and it's quite interesting. I've, you can buy ready cut in A4 sheets. I just thought it was easy to get a roll. And so I've cut it into A4 myself. It's shiny on one side and then matte on the other and the shiny side is the one that you put sort of cotton material onto iron it on and then this is the carrier really to help it go through the printer i've just got a regular inkjet printer i'll put a photo on the screen of mine now and i'm not recommending you get this one particularly it's nearly a decade old so um, it just does well enough for what i need it to do and I've also got some sheets here, it's literally an old sheet, uh, of Egyptian cotton that was one of our old bed sheets. So that needs an iron. I'm going to iron that first. Then I will iron the printer paper, printer paper, freezer paper onto it. Then I'll trim up the edges um, and then I'll come back. So behind me, you've probably seen an iron and an ironing board very rare moment to be captured here in me ironing anything so I'm going to pop off and do that trim it up and then I'll come back okay so I've got them back now and I'll just explain how I did it remember I said there's a matte side and then a shiny side and the shiny side has the wax on it so what I did was I ironed the material first to get that as flat as possible then I put the freezer paper with the matte side down onto the ironing board so the matte side down shiny side up put my fabric on top of that so that when the iron passes over it the wax will melt and go into the fabric and then to protect my iron i put a sheet of teflon over the top before i ironed it and then I didn't know if there would be any wax coming through the material that might stick to the bottom of my iron so I did that through a Teflon sheet and it seems to have stuck pretty well. I don't want to actually try and peel it off because I need it to be stuck on so all I'm going to do now is literally cut around the sheet of paper and then we'll try printing it. Okay, so here's the two. This is the one I've just printed and it actually went through fine. This is the freezer paper version. And you can see I just made four rectangles in design space and just attached them on and flattened them there. So, and I just picked a color that I could that was nearer to one of the background colors. So that enabled me to loop that over um, if we want to put a rod through to hang the tapestry on. Um, and also I forgot to say when I was ironing this I had the iron on a cotton setting and no steam so um, 
that's what I did and you can see it looks very similar it certainly went through the printer okay that obviously this one I haven't rinsed out underwater yet so you can see especially in this bit here the fencing that where I have rinsed it out it's sort of browner or more orangey brown and in this one it's a yellowy brown so what I was wondering is if I ironed this now before rinsing the water through maybe the iron might the heat might set the ink in the fabric but I'm making that up so I might try that um, and so you can see here I have done this as a print then cut I could put this in my Cricut now and cut it out or I could cut it out by hand the only I'd say limitation is if you know already the print then cut feature it has a maximum size that you can do if you wanted to exceed that and certainly for a simple shape like this you could just print the PNG in a regular way straight to your printer and cut it out by hand so and I'm probably going to cut this one out by hand you can see it tears off the backing paper fairly easily And one reason for doing it this way rather than print and cut is to print and cut it on the backing paper when I took it off it frayed the edges which you could trim off easily but um, so that is cool I'm going to cut this out now by hand and then I'm going to try and iron it I don't know if that will make a difference it might make all the colors run but um, it's something that I wanted to do, so I'm going to have a go at that in a minute, but I'll just cut it out first. Okay, so I ironed it and it looks the same, which is good. It didn't bleed. I'm imagining that when you rinse it through it's just so that if you were then going to wash this the colour wouldn't run into something else but I'm not going to wash this hopefully it won't get wet in the book nook so I prefer to leave it as it is I like the colours the way they are and what I'm going to do is put it on a backing material this is literally mm, it's navy but it doesn't looks a bit dark on there um, a pair of old uh, so kind of workout trousers that I had so it's it's very stretchy but it's got a nice fluid um, and stretchy weight to it so I thought that would be quite nice I want to encourage this to hang quite naturally but I also want to be able to put some creases in there so I'm going to do what I did before with the um, bed linen is to put a layer of foil in the mix so that then if I crease the tapestry it sort of in the long you know like that where it would hang the foil will just help keep those creases there so I'm gonna use this glue again if you remember I used that on the cushion for the medieval chair and I don't know if this has one side better than the other so what I'm going to do we're going to make a sandwich we're going to have the backing then the foil and then the tapestry and I haven't got the foil near the top tabs or on the bottom bit I want to cut and fray that bottom so it looks a bit more natural so I think this glue you set by ironing as well so I'm going to I could do the whole thing in one go couldn't I, I could just kind of glue everything but for the sake of caution I will glue the foil to the back of the tapestry first then I know that's where I want it to be and then I'll glue the whole of that onto the backing so we'll try that So I'm just going to iron this, we'll see if the glue makes the ink run and then I'll come back. 
okay, that was fine. I think, obviously this is more of a spirit based glue, so it didn't make the ink run and I used it quite sparingly. Um, if you were gonna use something like a PVA or water based glue, you definitely would want to rinse this out first. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to glue this onto the backing and I'm going to put the glue specifically down the edges and on the tabs so that then when I cut this material it doesn't fray so it might get a little bit messy I'm going to use a silicon sheet underneath this which so the glue will peel off but the idea is then when I cut these seams I'm cutting into the glue so it holds the material together so I'll do that now This glue does smell quite a bit, so I will put it, this as flat as I can, and remember I put glue along this bottom edge because I want to fray the tapestries, my, the tapestries, the fringe myself, and Just gently push it out. And I think it does say to leave it set up a bit before you actually... Oh yeah, you're meant to allow it to dry for seven minutes before you put them together and then iron for five to ten seconds. So I'll just leave this for seven minutes and then I'll iron it. Okay, I ironed it like I pressed it for 10 to 15 seconds on every area. Again, using the Teflon sheet. So um, because this front material is cotton and this one back on the back isn't, so I put it, ironed it this way down so the iron was in contact with the Teflon sheet and then the cotton, the backing was at the bottom. So, and actually, it's pretty good. Can you see that? It's glued nicely. So I'm just going to go all around the edges and hopefully I've got glue on all the seams. If not, it's really easy. You can just put a little bit more glue in on a cocktail stick and re-iron it if you've got any gaps. And you can see there where I've cut over the top of the tapestry is still glued to that. And then we've got a nice clean edge there. So it saves all that sewing. You can sew it if you want to, by all means. And if you remember, I've not glued the backing onto this. I want to have a go at sort of snipping into it and pulling some threads out so I'm just going to cut the backing off as close as I can without get it cutting the fringing off okay so you can see why I attached these extra tags, they can now loop over like that to be able to hang it by. And it's a little bit stiff in there because of the foil. And the other thing you might want to do is if you've got a Sharpie in a color that kind of matches this, is to just drag it along the edges I'll see if I can get a close up because I love the how, how this looks. Literally, the ink will bleed in. I don't know if that's, if you can see that. I'll get it 
closer hold on just drag it along the edge and the longer you hold it there the more the ink bleeds in and then from a distance you suddenly get a much more natural edge to the tapestry so I'm just going to do that all around the edge I don't know if you can see but it really helps disguise the white edge of the cotton um, so you don't suddenly think that this has been printed on there so I'm quite happy with that so the next thing I'm going to do is glue these tabs over um, I'm not going to do it exactly halfway because you can see there the pattern stop so I'm going to glue it so that we have all of the pattern on the tab and then the plain bit is glued behind and then we can just slide a kebab skewer in there or something to hold the tapestry in the room so I'm just going to again do dots of glue and then iron that And I'm going to do what the instruction says and leave that for five minutes now and then come back and stick them over and iron them. Okay, so I ironed those and you could now, if you imagine, this was installed in your book nook and it would hang quite nicely. And I think putting the backing on and the foil weighs it down and I don't know that I'm going to be able to show you this very easily uh, which camera I'll try that one that one so that is obviously the one that's been backed and hung on the skewer this one especially sideways I don't know if you can see that when it's flimsier and lighter I don't think it's going to hang as naturally whereas this will look like it's got some weight to it so the next thing to do is to sort of fray these ends and it's very, very dense cotton this, it's Egyptian cotton. So I don't know how easily it's going to fray, but I'll try. If it ends up that bad, I can just cut the whole bottom section off and actually buy some fringing and so we'll glue that on. So we'll see. I'll use my Cricut scissors for that because they're nice and sharp. I'm just going to be cutting up roughly into this colour. I'm not trying to cut the individual strands because you won't see them anyway. I'm just cutting a fringe and then we'll see if we can destroy it enough to make it look old and tattered. So, I've cut through that, it's actually, I've lost a few actual strands, but that's okay, you don't want it to look too pristine, I'm just going to bash it around a bit. And, can you I'll hold that up? If I pull them too hard, they do just come out. But if I just tweak them a bit, I might be able to just rough them up enough to make them look a little bit aged. I could, I was thinking I might take this tool and Pull, this, pull some threads out but it's so closely wound it's not going to do that it's going to pull them down in strips but it's not pulling them out ac across ways it's too kind of closely woven for that 
I might buy some fringing and to give it a bit more of a luxurious feel but I thought I'd try that seeing as it was on there so that really is that when I do some finishing touches in the book nook I'll do a video about that but if you can see you could just begin now to put some very subtle lengthwise creases in and then that will help it look as if it's naturally um, when it's on the pole at the top kind of got some weight and movement there so we, we want creases lengthways not widthways so that's that I think it's come out okay actually I probably will get some fringing if I can find a small enough scale fringing um, and then I'll show you how it looks in the book nook I could use a kebab skewer it's actually a nice um, not too chunky I'm not really into chunky so I'll cut some brackets on the Cricut and then I'll come back so these are the elements from craft board that make up the hooks simply glue the layers together and then the cup bit fits into the slot and glue that and I'll put a link for these on the free section of our website and then I stained the kebab skewer the hooks and I already had two dark wooden coloured square beads glued the square beads onto the kebab skewer and just sawed off the ends that overhung I did find some lovely gold fringing on Etsy so I glued that and ironed it on with the ironable glue and then this is the finished tapestry I just need to glue the brackets into the book nook and then hang the rod on the brackets I'll put the finished photos on Facebook and Instagram as usual so make sure you're following us there to see the updates thank you for joining me today and I'll see you soon